Hello, today I'm excited to show you how to install an HB Industries G36 style stock and stock adapter to your CZ Bren 2 rifle. The installation procedure is gonna be the same if your rifle is 5.56 or 7.62. It's also gonna to apply to both the Bren 2S and 2MS models. Let's go ahead and make sure this firearm is clear before we get started. We're gonna go ahead and keep the firearm on safe and this is actually preferred. It's gonna keep the hammer backing out of the way of the bolt and the upper receiver as we kind of get into this. So let's go ahead and set the, the Bren at the top of the frame and take a look at what is in the box when you get your Bren 2 stock kit or Bren 2 G36 stock kit. You got a bag of hardware, small, but very important parts, as well as, of course, your stock and stock adapter. So this procedure is only going to take about five minutes if I can talk less. The two, the three components that you're going to get in this bag are some hardware, the sling delete, we call it. There's a, a sling mount plate back here on the rear of the receiver. This is going to delete that and allow your G36 stock to fold completely to the side. You're also going to receive a replacement shell deflector. This shell deflector latches into the G36 stock, which is gonna allow your stock to stay securely stowed to the side of the receiver while you have it folded. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna set these components to the side and remove the components that we need to from the Brent. So again, we've already checked the weapons clear. We're gonna first remove the lower receiver, then we're gonna remove the stock adapter and the sling plate, and then lastly, the shell deflector, and then we'll go in the reverse order to install the new components. To, re to remove the lower receiver, we're gonna rock it, we're gonna, sorry, first we're gonna push the takedown pin from the left to the right, and then we're gonna, we're gonna kinda rock it down and pull forward in the same motion and set it to the side. For this rear um, trunnion or, this, or the stock, adapter. This one's a factory, the M4 buffer tube style. This one has a takedown pin in it, so go ahead and press the pin from right to left. And then using this, the, the lever, you can, actuate, you can actuate the detent and remove it from the lower receiver. This one, we're going to kind of pull the lever to actuate the detent and then slide the entire stock adapter down through the dovetail in the upper receiver, like that. And we're going to set this stock adapter, the factory stock adapter, to the side. Um, might be worth noting right now that if you if your rifle is configured as a carbine from the factory and it has a factory folding stock, there is no detent pin. I can kind of demonstrate this real quick for you. The installations, I'm sorry, the removal is nearly the same. So no takedown pin. But again, you'll see fold the fold your stock to the side, and that will reveal the detent actuating lever press that lever in and pull down on the entire stock assembly to remove it from the upper receiver. There is, your recoil spring is in the, rides obviously behind the stock adapter or the rear trunnion inside the upper receiver, but it's at resting, it does, it's not coming flying out of the firearm. So be aware it's there, but nothing to be worried about. It's not under trem tremendous pressure. The next component we're gonna remove again is this, the factory sling plate using a T25 um, hex key. It's the same hex key that you would use on our handguards or the factory handguards. You can also use this hex key on the um, sights, which is kind of a clever, th there's, I'm sorry, this Torx key on the hex screw in the sight. It's kind of a clever design by CZ. It's the one tool for the entire firearm. So remove the screw in your factory, try to show it better. Remove the screw in the factory sling mount plate and set both the plate and the screw to the side. They will not be reused. Next, we're going to remove this shell deflector. To do that, let's go ahead and grab, we're going to use this Delrin block, but you can use a, a piece of wood if you have any other similar armors block. That's the perfect tool to use for this. We just want to support the upper receiver. Um, as we're going to drive a roll pin 
through the shell deflector and into the upper receiver. You can kind of take a look before you do that. This hole behind the bolt in the upper receiver is where the, roll, the securing roll pin's located. You'll notice that it doesn't come close enough to the bolt or the operating, I'm sorry, the recoil rod to interfere. So what we're gonna do is drive that roll pin all the way into the upper receiver and just let it fall out. We'll, retrie we'll retrieve it and then we'll put the new shell deflector on. The, I guess the only thing to note, try to see, try to notice the position of your roll pin before we remove it. Um, see how it does not protrude from this inside surface on the upper receiver. It allows the bolt to reciprocate past it. This is important. We'll need to install the, reinstall the roll pin in a similar fashion. So using our three millimeter punch and a hammer, we're gonna tap the three millimeter roll pin through the shell deflector and the upper receiver. As you kind of get to the, maybe we should show it. As it starts to push through, right, there's your roll pin. It's about, I wanna say it's 15 millimeters long, maybe it's 20 millimeters long. Um, as it starts to come into the upper receiver, you might wanna kind of slow down the tapping and wait for it to fall out. I'll kind of show that here. Here is the roll pin. And another quick note, we include a replacement roll pin with the HP Industries G36 socket adapter kit. So as soon as you open the box, you have two of these roll pins on hand. If you should damage or lose the one that you remove from your the factory pin, there is a replacement ready for you should you need it. They are, again, they are identical. You can use the factory one twice or you can discard the factory pin and use the new pin. Just note that you do have two. So if you lose it or damage it, no worries. This shell deflector is dovetailed into the upper receiver. Into the upper receiver. I'm a visual person, so kind of a, I guess a, a cheat or a tip would be to look at the HB Industries shell deflector that comes with the stock kit before you remove your factory. If this is your first time doing it, before you remove the factory shell deflector, just to get an idea of what the dovetail looks like, maybe how long it is, um, kind of how it's made it to the upper receiver because you obviously cannot see that when it's installed. So you can use your replacement part to kind of get an idea of what's underneath here. Sometimes they slide off. Sometimes you got to kind of tap them off with a hammer. Um, <laughs> of course, this one just slides out. Um, but say it didn't, right? The, the procedure would be to just lightly tap until it slides out of the until it slides out of the, the dovetail that's located in. I'm gonna go ahead and dis discard or set to the side your factory shell deflector. Make sure the channel that it mounts in is clean and install the HB Industries shell deflector. Kind of get started by hand and then we're gonna use our hammer. You can use a, a steel hammer if you want. I mean, it's a pretty robust piece of polymer. It's made to deflect brass for its life. Um, or you can use an island hammer, totally up to you. We're gonna, I'm using a metal hammer in this case so that we can kind of hear it make contact with the upper receiver. So when we start to tap on the polymer, it's gonna sound a little bit a little bit hollow, a little plasticky. And as soon as the dovetail in the shell deflector is seated up against the dovetail in the upper receiver, the whole sound of the hammer hitting the, the shell deflector is gonna become more metallic. And again, we're kind of leveraging the, the hollow cavity inside this upper receiver and using it to kind of to kind of resonate and tell us when this part's mated correctly. So I'll be quiet and I'm going to tap the shell deflector a few times and the first few taps are probably going to sound plasticky again and when we make contact with the back of the dovetail it'll get more metallic sounding and more of like a solid hit. So here goes. So the last three taps were, I don't know if you could hear them, we're significantly louder um, here. I don't know if it's on camera, but here we're significantly louder, and that's just indicating again that our shell deflector is completely seated in the dovetail on the upper receiver. Next thing we're gonna do is install our new roll pin, or as mentioned before, you can reuse um, the roll pin that came out of your out of the factory um, shell deflector. So go ahead and get started into the 
into the shell deflector. And then we're gonna, again, leverage that sound, that metallic sound um, that we're gonna get when the roll pin now makes contact with the upper receiver. So as the roll pin's traveling through the polymer um, shell deflector, it's gonna make one sound. As soon as the roll pin comes into contact with the wall of the upper receiver, you're gonna, it's gonna sound more metallic and you'll get a, you'll get a, both a physical feel in the punch as well as an audible um, change in how the, how the pin sounds. So we're gonna drive it through the, through the shell deflector until we hear it change pitch and then another eighth inch or so, eighth inch, three sixteenths into the upper receiver. I'm gonna stop when I hear it change pitch. Don't know if you can hear it. It's definitely, um, you can feel it in the punch that we've, we've gone through the, the polymer and now we're making contact with the upper receiver. I cannot see it protruding into the upper receiver yet, so we're gonna go a little bit further. And the process now is just to kind of slowly shift the pin lower and lower and lower into the receiver until you can see it through the, the bore down here, the hole or the bore inside the upper receiver. And stop before it comes into the the bolt channel. And you should be able to see it here, our pin now visible in the upper receiver, but not protruding past the surface. And kind of check it, I guess, before we go any further, go ahead and slide your bolt back. And you need the bolt to clear that three millimeter roll pin. So with the shell deflector installed, let's go ahead and finish up the installation with the rest of the stock. Grab your, grab the G36 um, stock and stock adapter. We're gonna slide it up the dovetail. Um, I like to kind of reach in and depress the, sometimes it's not necessary. Yeah, that time it wasn't even necessary. Sometimes you'll need to kind of depress the the bump, the buffer pad on the back of the, the recoil spring to make the stock adapter seat correctly or seat all the way up in the receiver. You'll know it's seated correctly when the gap is gone between the lower receiver and the stock adapter. This window will be filled by our the sling delete we showed earlier. So at this point, I like to kind of fold the stock to the side, latch it on to the shell deflector, and we're gonna drop our delete plate into that window and our new screw. Again, it's gonna be a T25, so go ahead and slide it slide the screw into the channel or the, the hole and tighten it down and kind of torque it. And then next we're gonna grab our lower receiver again. So go ahead and grab your lower receiver and again, re reverse installation. Reverse, in, reverse install as removal. So slide the tab on the back of the receiver into the socket adapter, and then push the lower receiver up and the takedown pin through. Now you've installed your HVN Studios G36 stock onto your brand two. And you can kind of check function, make sure it mounts securely to the shell deflector. It's a very solid stock. Function check. And ready to go. If you have any questions or need any additional information on either this product or others, go ahead and give us a call. You can send us an email, reach out to us on social media. We're always glad to help. Thank you for watching.